For centuries, Christians have celebrated the day known as Good Friday. This is the day where we remember the death of Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was delivered up by his fellow Jews and crucified by Roman soldiers outside of Jerusalem. But why do we celebrate this day? Why do we call Good Friday good? Why do we continue to remember the death, the shameful crucifixion of an innocent man that happened nearly 2,000 years ago? The answer is that Good Friday is at the very heart of the gospel, the good news that we confess. Paul puts it like this in Romans 5, 6 to 8. He said, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one would scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might dare even to die. But God chose his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But in order for us to understand the good news of Good Friday, we have to start with the sobering truth that we ourselves are not good. You see, Paul here in verses 6 to 8 paints a very clear picture of what humanity has become. Though we were created in God's image to know him and to love him and to enjoy him forever, we've all chosen to go our own way. Here, Paul says that we are ungodly. This means that we have failed to give God the honor and the glory that he is due. We fail to worship him. We fail to live according to his truth. This is why Paul goes on to say that we are sinners. This means that we've fallen short of God's moral standards. We've gone away from the way of righteousness. We've missed the mark. And so this is who we are. We are ungodly and sinful. We are not good. And because God is the holy and good God that he is, because he is the holy judge that he is, he cannot let our sin and ungodliness go unpunished. Because we have failed to honor God the way he is due, because we have failed to live and we have the way he requires and we have broken his law, God must punish our sin if he's to be just and good. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. This is why Paul also says that we were weak He says, while we were still weak, this means we were helpless, powerless to save ourselves. It means that there's nothing that we can do to earn God's favor. There's nothing we can do, no good work we can perform, no kind of positive attitude we can have, no list of truths we can just uh, recite at whim. No, there is nothing we can do to cleanse ourselves, to cleanse our conscience, to rid ourselves of the sin and guilt that we have. So what hope do we have? What hope do weak, helpless, sinful, ungodly sinners, such as ourselves, what hope do we have? What hope do we have of being forgiven and accepted by a holy God? The answer is that Jesus Christ died for us. Paul says here that it was at the right time, at the right time, while we were helpless, while we were weak, while we were sinful, while we were ungodly, while we were the very enemies of God, Christ died for us. See, in love, the maker of heaven and earth himself came into history, into his story, by taking on flesh and coming in the person of his son, Jesus. But God did not send his son into the world because we deserved it. God did not send his son into the world because we were lovely or valuable or worthy of such a a, a gift. No, God sent his son, Jesus, into the world to show us his love. You see, Jesus in his life was obedient to the law of God. Fully man, he was obedient to the law in a way that none of us have ever been or ever will be. Yet this Jesus, who alone was perfectly righteous, who never deserved to even taste suffering or death, this Jesus lays down his life and is crucified by the hands of wicked men. On the cross, God in Christ bears the penalty for our sin. Jesus suffered the judgment of God. He was crushed for our iniquities. He was pierced for our transgressions. But three days later, because his obedience was perfect, because his sacrifice for sin was accepted by God, God raised him up from the dead, proving that the work of salvation was done. And so here we have on display for the whole world, We have a proof of God's love, the most amazing, wonderful act of love the world has ever known or will ever know, is that God in Christ gave himself for unworthy sinners. See, we might die for our family. We might die for someone we love, our friends, maybe even someone we think deserves it, someone who's righteous, someone who's good. But for someone to die for their enemies is entirely different. For someone to lay down their life, someone innocent, 
to lay down their life for someone who's guilty is almost unheard of. But yet this is exactly what God in Christ has done for us. And here we find the firm foundation of our hope. Here we see that the love of God is the firm foundation of our hope. So friends, the good news that we believe is that by grace through faith in Christ Jesus, we can be saved. You don't have to go another moment considering if you're good enough or could ever be good enough because you're not and you won't. But the good news is that this is exactly where you need to be to receive the offer of grace found in the gospel. For those who acknowledge their need for a savior, for those who confess their rebellion against God and their sinfulness, who turn from their sins and look to Christ in faith, we can be saved through faith in his name. This is the good news. We can be forgiven. We can have peace with God. We can be welcomed into his family. We can be given new life, abundant life. We can rejoice in hope. So think of where you are in life right now. Do you need, do you crave, do you long for acceptance? Then look to Jesus, who will love you with an everlasting love. Are you looking for peace and joy? Then look to Christ, who alone makes all things new. Are you looking for the guilt and your shame to be removed? Then look to Jesus, who bears our sins in his body on the cross. Are you looking for an answer for suffering and an answer, a solution for suffering, then look to the risen Lord Jesus who alone can make all things new. Friends, it is this hope that we have. It is this hope that is the love of God in Christ. It is the firm foundation of our hope. And this is why we call Good Friday good.